Hi everyone, this is Riccardo from the University of Bologna speaking about another probabilistic approach for the study of neutral current ripple in split capacitor inverters. The objective of this manuscript is to provide perspectives into the well-known ripple cancellation phenomenon using current ripple covariance for analyzing constructive and destructive ripple summation. The neutral current is given by the sum of phase currents, and any of these currents can be split into two parts. The first one is the so-called AC component, the one having sinusoidal waveform. The second one is the switching current ripple caused by PWM high frequency component. Therefore, neutral current ripple can be seen as the instance by instance summation of each phase current ripple. Clearly, PWM pulse disposition can influence this summation in a constructive or destructive way. The two most popular PWM techniques for split capacitor inverters are synchronous and interleaved PWM. The first compares each modulating signal against a unique carrier, while the second presents three carriers associated with each phase. The fundamental AC component is the same for both techniques, but the ripple results to be modified by the different PWM pulse dispositions. In fact, it is well known that in this type of inverter, synchronous PWM leads to constructive summation and therefore high neutral current ripple, while interleaved one presents a powerful ripple cancellation effect. How to quantify this cancellation effect? How to understand what does it mean constructive and destructive summation? On this aspect, it's particularly useful to look at the neutral current ripple RMS using a probabilistic approach. Indeed, by describing the RMS in terms of ripple variance and playing with the algebra of random variables, it is possible to understand that neutral current ripple is constituted by a certainly positive component equal to the phase current ripple RMS, plus a component that represents the covariance of any couple of current ripples. In particular, positive values of covariance lead to constructive summation, while negative values mean ripple cancellation through destructive summation. By looking at the covariance in the case of synchronous PWM, it is clear that it represents always positive values over the whole modulation index range. On the other hand, interleaved PWM presents an always negative covariance, ensuring in any working condition ripple cancellation effect. In fact, by analytically studying the RMS, it is immediately clear that synchronous PWM is always above the dashed trace representing the zero covariance level, while the interleaved one is always below. Is interleaved PWM always the best technique? In this regard, 4,000 numerical validation considering unevenly displaced PWM carriers have been performed. As visible, synchronous and interleaved traces always bound all the randomized results. Clearly, interleaved PWM is always the best technique in this kind of inverter. Conclusion: collect all the results shown in this presentation. Thank you very much.